so this is probably going to be a longer form video. Uh, I flipped back and forth a lot on whether or not to make this video. There's a lot of fear of judgment and embarrassment putting myself out there, but it felt important to make um, for me. I guess I'll start with where these thoughts all kind of started, which is the start of October 2023, um, when I tore my right wrist in the lead up to that. I was probably in the best shape I've been in my life. I'd had a month long trip to Kalbarri and I'd managed to send a project up there that I had put a lot of time into over the years and was feeling really good. I'd come back to Albany really psyched um, and really, I think, looking for something to challenge myself where I would feel like a beginner again. Um, what felt perfect for that was this cracked project that I'd sort of been avoiding for a long time because I think I had a fear of failing on it. Um, and maybe that kind of ego boost of sending something hard, it kind of fortified me against that, that feeling of embarrassing myself. Um, but I, I really wanted to put time into that and to, to learn how to crack climb. And there were also some other projects around Albany that I was really psyched on that I'd been trying for a long, long time. I felt really good. So I was trying those kind of end of August, start of September, and I was thinking to myself, this is the time to go part-time. I've been thinking about going part-time for work for a long time to try to focus on climbing for six months or a year and decided to, to go for it and, and take up a part-time contract for this year, 2024. Um, it was around the time that that was confirmed that I had my injury, I, um, spent too many days I think in a row trying that crack climb as someone who's a novice at crack climbing uh, maybe climbing a roof crack wasn't the best idea um, I essentially put my hand into the crack um, I'd had a few days on I was tired probably didn't have the best technique but twisted and I think my foot popped and yeah my hand was stuck in there and I just felt this pop in my wrist and um yeah, I knew at that point, really, I think that I'd done the same injury to my TFCC that I'd done on my left some years ago. I decided to keep the part-time contract for 2024 because uh, in my mind, I'd had this injury before. I, I thought maybe the recovery will be a month. At most, it would be three months and it would be fine. Um, but yeah, it just didn't get better. Um, it just kind of, every time I started trying to load it, it would really hurt, it would feel aggravated. Um, and so I decided to see a hand therapist who recommended I get an MRI and put it in a thermoplastic splint and properly immobilise it for a good few months. And so at that point I decided, you know what, uh, might as well stay part-time for 2024. Um, maybe I'll still recover. But... I might as well start trying to knock off some of my written exams for my fellowship. So I decided to sign up for the SA exam at the end of February. Um, not really thinking about the fact that I had to write with my right hand. I think I thought by February it would be fine. Um, come February, I was still in a thermoplastic splint. Um, I had the option of typing, but I decided to just write because I really was not comfortable typing an essay type exam. Thankfully I got through the exam, so I was pretty stoked about that. And it was during that time I actually made the other video um, where I talked about whether or not I wanted to return to climbing. I got out of the thermoplastic splint in the middle of April and had a little bit of rehab that was quite light and started trying some really easy climbing had a couple of days in the Grampians and went out there and felt surprisingly good. And after getting back from the Grampians, I think that was late May, was thinking about 
where to next. Um, I decided that the best call to call for me was actually to focus on doing my next written exam and sign up for that one at the end of August because there was still a huge fear of re-injuring the wrist for me with climbing. I didn't want to push it that hard and studying for the exam felt like a, maybe a good excuse to not push too hard with the rehab and things like that. And in that period of study, I, I was still keeping up the rehab, the wrist was feeling better and better. Um, and I think I built up the idea in the lead up to the exam that maybe after that exam I'd be able to have a couple of months to really start training and maybe be in shape for the summer season, the peak climbing season here in Albany. Um, I did the exam uh, and then got really sick. I um, got sick for nearly two and a half weeks um, and over that period somehow lost nearly nine kilos. Uh, I don't have that much weight to lose. Yeah, I felt terrible. Uh, I was a bit stir crazy from having studied for the exam. And then, you know, basically in bed for two and a half weeks. So I went out climbing. And mm, in retrospect, maybe not so surprisingly, tore my hamstring. Um, well, eight and a half kilos that I lost was probably mostly muscle and the muscle just wasn't ready for it after not really climbing that much for nearly a year. And at that point, I just remember having all these catastrophizing thoughts. It wasn't helped by the fact that the hamstring injury happened almost a year to the day after the wrist injury and the wrist injury had happened kind of a couple of weeks after turning 30. And I just had all these thoughts that maybe this is just getting older, that it's not meant to be. Um, that those thoughts that I'd had earlier in the year while still in thermoplastic of maybe not going back to climbing were justified. And so since then, um, I had a trip to New Zealand. That was lovely. Did some easy-ish climbing there. Um, that didn't aggravate the hamstring, thankfully. Um, but really, I've had a lot of time to reflect. And I don't think I've come to any conclusions. That's not the point of why I'm talking, but... I, I've just had lots of thoughts, lots of thoughts relating to what my motivation for climbing is, um, if I do return, what the reasons for returning are, and why I'd return, what what does it mean to me? And, and like I said, I don't think I've come to conclusions. I think conclusions implies that you've reached the end, but I think it's something that's ever evolving and my thoughts will continue to change and evolve over time with more and more experience, I think. I mentioned before that I had a lot of anxiety sharing this and part of that, I think, it relates to my ego, the fear of being embarrassed. But at the same time, I also want to make sure that I'm doing this for the right reasons. I originally intended to make this video privately and upload it just for me, so to have it on the private but over the past year, 14 months, I've really gotten a lot out of seeing other people's videos, reading other people's blogs and essays, and it feels a bit selfish to not add to that mix, um, to add my own two cents. Having gotten so much from the experiences of others, hopefully someone will get something out of this. So, um, why did I return to climbing and why do I think I'll continue to return to it? Being injured and having all this time off has been a really good opportunity to reflect on my motivations and what I've gone back to constantly has been why I really was drawn to climbing in the first place. I started climbing pretty late. I, was, I think I was 21 when I started climbing and I remember I was trying a few different sports and activities out I really hated going to the gym. I found lifting weights, and running really repetitive and kind of mind numbing. But when I started climbing up, I really enjoyed that kind of experience of problem solving. I really also was drawn to the fact that it did, at the time, I wasn't aware of competitions. It didn't feel competitive. 
it felt really kind of easy going, particularly bouldering. You did it by yourself. You felt like you did it for yourself, or I felt like I did it for myself. That's, I think, what I keep coming back to. And I think that really a big part of the reason I considered not coming back to climbing was really because of my own ego. You know, like I said, I'd kind of come off doing something really hard for me. And I really do think that my ego at the time maybe couldn't handle the possibility of not being good at this activity. And now in retrospect, I, I realise that that maybe that was a failing on my part. Um, I know or acknowledge that ego is inevitable, it's human. But I think I've been too sucked into this fantasy of trying to be really good at something um, in a competitive way of maybe trying to be better than others. And now looking back, I think I realise that, yeah, I did have that fear of what's the point of going back if I can't be good, if I can't do those things. But that ignores what I initially enjoyed in climbing. What I enjoyed in climbing wasn't being good at it or, you know, sending things. Um, it was this lack of competitiveness, lack of comparison, this kind of problem solving process with your body and, and almost feeling artistic in the way that you moved and creative and discovering solutions that maybe were unique to your own body and your own strengths and weaknesses. I think that ego is inevitable. Um, I don't think I've overcome it. I don't think it can be necessarily completely overcome, but that the overcoming of ego is really a constant journey, um, for me at least. Early on in my climbing, I got sucked into the numbers game of chasing bigger and bigger numbers and I'd like to think that I overcame that a little bit in moving to Albany and focusing more on the outdoors and the nature around the climbing and the experience of the climb. But I still, at times, would think about the number probably a bit too much. I kept kind of focusing on the send as well. Um, I'd like to think that I tried to portray the process as much as possible rather than just having a send video to try to show that most of climbing is failing and that really that's the part that's most enjoyable. I tried to make those videos for the right reasons but I do think that there was an element of ego even in that, in having a send, wanting to prove something to the world, wanting to say, look, I did this cool thing and it's a tick, but also to prove it, to, to prove that I've done it for someone or maybe not someone specific. And I fear that that may be, have been too much of the motivation for making those videos. That ego of wanting to show something, to prove something. As I said at the start, there's a bit of a battle of ego even in making this video. There's even some anxiety as to whether I'm doing this for the right reasons of, like I said earlier, to kind of put my thoughts out there and to, uh, in some altruistic way, trying to uh, repay what I've gotten back out of other people's videos and other people's blogs and essays and things. But there is a thought in the back of my mind is, am I trying to do this to explain why I haven't been sending things or uh, justify that somehow? I'd like to think it's the former, but what I've realised really is that, that it's not a battle per se, but that really accepting it and being aware of it is what's important. I think that over the years, too much of my self-worth has been tied up in climbing uh, more than is healthy. And I think that I realised that the relationship that I did have with climbing was not that healthy. 
but I've also realised that climbing is something I want to keep doing for as long as I possibly can. When I first started back climbing, I tried doing easy things to see whether that brought me the same joy, and it brought me joy, no doubt about that, but it was in trying harder and harder that I, I found the most joy in that process of problem solving. It was kind of all consuming in the sense that worry about work and life and stress wasn't there anymore. It, it kind of blotted that out in a way that climbing easier things maybe didn't. But what I realised is that it wasn't sending that could brought that joy, it was the trying hard. It wasn't the number that brought the joy. It was the physical feeling of having to problem solve with your body. And I found that challenge even on things that had lower numbers and even on things that were projects that maybe are numbers I'll never get to, that I may never do, I think brings me the same joy. In some ways, weirdly, coming back to Glyman after so, so long off brought more joy in that there are things that would have been maybe easy that were challenging. And maybe there was something to be said for maybe not getting stronger is the answer to having those challenges. However, what I've learned from these injuries, I think, is that if I want to continue to get joy out of trying those things as hard as I can and to push my body in those ways that I need to prepare my body for those things. And so I will continue doing rehab, training, um, prehab, preparation of, of the body for those things. But the goal is different, is just to make sure that my body can handle those things rather than where before the motivation was to send harder and do bigger things. Now it's more just this idea of trying to bulletproof my body against another injury so that I can enjoy climbing for as long as is possible. The side effect of doing the training will be probably to get stronger but it's not the goal of the training anymore. Oh learnt that yeah I'm not getting younger and if I want to keep doing the climbing in the way that I enjoy doing it that I need to dial in things correctly diet nutrition sleep training properly I've realized that yeah I have as I said in that previous video probably gotten away with things from being younger um, or just lucky um, for a lot of my climbing life my nutrition sucked I realize that now in retrospect my warm-up didn't exist I'd climb for many days on I didn't have any structured training if any kind of meaning and I think I got away with it and these injuries have been a wake-up call number one to really examine my motivations in climbing and number two to really kind of dial in making sure that I do things right so that I can keep enjoying it for as long as I can. My previous experience had been that sending something can be in some ways disappointing. Um, you've conquered something, it's a very western idea I think um, and it's still something that I think is ingrained in in my brain, although I try to overcome it, I really do think that now my focus is going to be in enjoying the process, even after the climb's done, even after it's sent or ticked, that there's still so much to learn, even having done the climb, to do it maybe not better, but to do it in a way that feels nicer for your body, to do it with a beta that maybe it's harder but feels more elegant um, feels more natural um, rather than just focusing on what's the best way to get to the top in terms of doing it quickly what's the best way of getting to the top in terms of how it might feel and i've really enjoyed going back to problems that i had done before and trying to find a method that maybe isn't the most efficient but that works nicer for my body that feels nicer 
in the past, I think it was this attitude of all of that process was made worthwhile by the fact that there was a tick at the end, a green tick. But I think that that process doesn't need to end there, that there can be more of a process after that, more of an understanding, more of an expression through movement and less of um, being tied to the ego of saying, yep, I did this cool, hard thing. I want to be as genuine as I can moving forward with my videos. Not to say I don't think I've been genuine in the previous videos, but I think that my promise more to myself is that I want to make videos that showcase the beauty of a place where the climb is, the nature around it, and also where there is a process that showcases as much of that process as possible. Um, the frustration, the ups and the downs, rather than having the goal of the video be the tick. I think it is dangerous to just focus on the tick for climbing to kind of become this collection of achievements and things that you've conquered because it can take away from that pure experience of just the process. And so, as I said, the process can continue after the tick, but that there doesn't need to be a tick for that process to be equally worthwhile. I think there's a lot of projects here that I'll never do and that I avoided because I think that I might never do them. That once my injuries are rehabbed enough, I'm really excited to try just for the sake of trying. The final thought that I've had is that maybe Instagram and YouTube are a constant game of self-promotion and, and all that. I've taken my videos down for a period of time and considered deleting my channel, deleting my Instagram, but I think that as long as I can keep the way that I engage with these platforms genuine and meaningful for me, and I'm constantly mindful of the trap of ego, that keeping these platforms up is something that is meaningful for me, that brings me joy in the sense that I get to engage with climbing in a different way, in a creative process of making media as long as that continues to be the case, I think I will keep making these videos. They might be the same as what I've been making in the past. I've been really happy with a lot of the videos, but there may be videos that are different. I don't know. I haven't thought about that that much. As I said before, there's no conclusion to this. That's not the point. A conclusion like a tick is very final. I think this is something that my thoughts will keep evolving on and this video is really more a meandering mess of reflections.